moments. All right, so comfortable seat. Gently opening the eyes and something else that is very useful when being aware of the body is this idea that our brain and body want to have good communication back and forth. So a way to help that is one of the benefits of self-massage. So place your hands together, rub, then take your left hand and rub along the outside of the right arm all the way up. So we're just feeding information in to the brain. So we're going on the outer portion all the way up, all the way down. Then we're going to the inner portion, go all the way along the inseam to the armpit and down the side of the body and then all the way back to the hand. So there, just having done that, your brain has a better idea of where your arm is in relation to your body and you've lit up that portion of the brain, right? So let's do it to the other side, rub. So you're just feeding information, tactile information into the brain through the body. And then we go on the under portion. All the way down and out. And then just spend a little extra time on the hands, the wrists, the back of the hand, hand and wrist and out to the fingers. All right, and then take the hands onto your neck and just run the hands up the back of the neck. And then take each thumb here, right at the base of the skull and go in and out right along the base of that skull. So we're defining the skull joint there. Then take your fingers like claws and just run them through the hair along the scalp. Just get very clear where your skull is, your scalp. Then take your index finger and lead on this sort of sweep across the forehead and the brow. Then from the bridge of the nose, up and over. And then the ears themselves, we do a cupping, a squishing and underneath like this. Do it with both. And then do index finger behind the ear, middle finger in front of the ear, up and down. Michelle, make sure you stay muted there. I think I had you muted already. I got you. So I'll mute you. You're good. <laughs> and then scissor cut circles on the ear itself. And then your jaw all the way down to the collarbones, jaw, all the way down. Lung point one and two, this little nook right here, make a little knuckle situation with your fist and circle right there. 
and then rub the shoulder. And the other side, circle. And shoulder. And then take your open palms right along your liver and your spleen, your front rib cage. And then down to your groin area and your inner thighs. And then go around the back to the tail and the lower back. Turn the hands around and make fists. Use your thumbs to go up your back. And then you're down on your legs again. Rub your thighs. So tops, sides, backs, underneath, inner. Then go to the knees, rub the knee joint. Then fold at the hips and get your lower legs, calves and shins. And then we do this little flow here where you're down, you sweep the hands around to the inner leg, come all the way up the inseam, past the groin to your belly button. Go around the belly button to the back of the spine there. That's your Ming Men. Turn your palms to face your body and rub. And then go down the back side of the legs, around the feet to the inner, come up the inner all the way to the belly button. Around to the Ming Men. Rub that area, and then down you go. Around and up. One more, around. And up, and then finally sweep up the outside, turn the palm up, comes down the inside and off. Turn the palm down, up, down. Do it again, up. Yeah. One more. And we switch. We go up the outside, down the inside. Up the outside, down the inside. And finish. All right. Scoot to the back of your chair. Let's just do a little bit of leg range of motion. Lift and bring the heel back in towards the buttock. That's called chamber. And then set the foot down, chamber, set down, chamber, down, chamber, down. Now, chamber, push, chamber, down, other leg. And Kathy, could you mute yourself for me? Because I think you're muted when you come in. And so I think people are thinking that. Thank you. On this last one, extend the leg and keep it out there. Point flex. So we got to liberate the foot so the foot feels loose and connected but loose. And then invert, evert. And then inward circle. Outward circle. And down, other leg, point flex. <clears throat> I want it very clear for our brain where our foot begins and ends and can move. Invert, evert. Circles. Other direction, circles. And down. Okay, scoot again to the front edge of your chair. So you're sitting right at the front edge. From that front edge, let's do our hinge. So we're really working on not rounding the spine, but very clearly moving from that hip joint. Let's add to that as you come back up, you actually lean back. So this is a more obtuse angle at the hip crease. Then it's a 90 degree angle. Then it's an acute angle. 
and then it's back towards 90 and then obtuse and then 90. So we're very clearly able to move. This is the most important body part joint movement space for generating power, for getting down near the ground, for everything is this hip leg connection here. So very important. And then uh, we'll take that one step further, step the legs wider, place your hands on your thighs and we fold forward. So now since the legs are open, what it allows us to do is not run into the legs, but actually take our pelvis somewhat between the legs, keep your hands on your legs to support you and just see how far in that direction you can go sort of ring out the hips and groin area and then rise back up and then lean back a little bit and then forward to that vertical spine and then hinge just ringing out our hips and then back up and again lean back and one more And now we do a really fun one with this. Legs stay nice and wide. We lean back. Now we lean a little bit to the right and bow the chest towards the right knee and then scoop and sweep the torso around to the other side and then lean way back and around you go. The dragon stirs the sea with its tail. So this is very nutritious movement for the brain, for the body, for the joints because it's round, it's whole, it's complete. Go the other way. Eventually, and we do this one all the time in the other Tai Chi class, eventually you can do this one in such a way that every joint of the body is getting this really nice roll. All the vertebra, the skull, but even the shoulders, arms and everything. All right, and we're back to the middle. Legs come closer together. Last two exercises with the legs before we stand up and start to play around. Uh, so make sure you guys can see my legs. Okay. So here we do lift the ball of your uh, left foot, swivel, and point the knee and the toes out. Right. And then lift the heel, swivel, and point the knee a little bit in, the heel pushes out. Lift the toe, open, so now we should be even wider. Lift the heel, swivel one more time, and then finally full open, this is usually the maximum angle. And then internal, lift the heel, external. Lift the toe, internal, lift the heel, external. Neutral, let's do that twice more with this leg. You wanna be able to flow it, one, two, three, four, five, internal rotation, external. So it's hip to toes, all one, all one. One more time. Otto, could you yeah. position the camera so that we can see your feet? Can you Maybe. not see my feet right now? Are you on full screen, Karen? Make sure you're on full screen, everybody. So that's top right corner in your view button. You got to be on full screen, so it's really filling up your screen. Because my toe, I can see my feet on my screen. I can see your feet too. Okay, well, let's see me then. Full screen. There we go. Yep, that did it. Thank you. So, uh, okay, cool. And then let's do the other leg. So we go external. Lift the heel internal. Lift the toe external. Lift the heel internal. Final time open. And we walk it internal, external all the way in, back, external, walk it out, internal, walk it in, and last one, open, and back, good. Now try to do that one with both, where they're nice and close together, and we go one open, Lift the heels, one close, and then one more open. That's usually our maximum. And then internal, external, close. One, two, three, 
one, two, three. And just notice that my hips and spine and everything else are just still. They're not moving, it's just legs. So I'm able to discern for my brain, pelvis and hips and legs and make these movements clear. So my, my body's not coming along for the ride. So that's what we got to do with every body part is discern and clear the lines so that when we move, we are not moving in areas of the body that we shouldn't be, right? Which creates cumbersome and clumsy movement. So we're cleaning up and polishing our brain body awareness. All right. And then the last one we'll do here with the legs, this uh, left leg, we lift it roll it out and set it down. And then the left leg, lift it, roll it in and set it down. Let's do it again, same leg. So you keep your weight, you're kind of in your right buttock, hands are over here and you just, eventually you want that to just be a clean movement. Uh, and one more. Switch. Uh, Karen, I think you're unmuted. Could you mute yourself for me? Sorry. It's okay. And then out. And in. One more. And out. And all right. Now we'll just do a brief close just to bring to the end what we've just done, this sort of opening series of self-massage, some joint mobilization. So this is what makes it sort of classic Tai Chi or Qigong, or really Qigong practice, is that you recognize, you don't just keep doing and doing and doing and doing and doing throughout the class. You do, and then you don't for a moment. You become still. You return to stillness, you return to center. And then from that, you go into another round of the next phase, right? So that's what we'll do here, standing and sitting. So slide your feet back a little. So this is just practical as can be. You're sitting somewhere in your house or at a, a, a meal or something. First thing you do, feet slide back a little bit. Next thing you do, you think forward. So you fold and then you think forward. And then you push through the earth and you rise. Then it's time to sit down. You think not down, you think fold, butt back, head forward. Then from there, it's sink the butt, land it, then it's back to neutral. Let's do that four more times. Go ahead, I'm gonna adjust my camera. So fold, think forward, and then think push down to rise up. Then on the way down, it's fold, sink the butt, but stay balanced, and then land it, and back. Three more. Fold, forward, up. So you can see that once you get it, it in its broken up uh, phase version, where it's one, two, three, and one, two, three. Then let's do a few where we try to smooth out the corners of that, where it's just fold in, sink and land and arrive. Same thing when standing up. It's fold and go forward, but then go up. So then it starts to have that roundness, that fluidity, where you can just but without the hinge of the hips, none of this works. And that's what a lot of people lose. They're so tight and then they round their back like this to try to get their head forward. And they try to just push up, right? And then they're like, why isn't this working? Versus you see the difference of hip. If I hinge at the hip, my spine stays straight in relationship to itself and it just folds and then straightens. Same thing here. So find those hips, hinge and rise. And there's so much power 
when you unlock these hips. There's power for all different activities that you want to do. All right. So now make sure you have your uh, balance implement, your chair. And I'm going to tilt the screen down. I'm just going to err on the side of see more of my feet here. Okay. So now facing one way with a free leg. Swing the leg. And so one thing to be aware of is swinging forward is usually kind of easy to see, but a lot of times people stop here and bend their knee rather than swing from the hip. So get this hip loose, swing from the hip. All right, and change sides. So you land the foot turned in, turn around and swing. Make sure you're moving from the hip. Loose, free, as easy as can be. All right, and change sides again. Now watch what I do here. The leg swings back, I bend the knee a bit, bring the knee forward, extend the foot, swing, swing, and bring it up and over. just loosening and freeing up the joint relationships. Switch directions in the leg. So now it goes forward, tucks up and reaches back, sweeps forward, tucks, reaches. Switch sides. Swing the leg back. Bend, come up and over. Reverse, forward, tuck, reach back. And Face the chair sideways, out, in, out, in. Loose, free. Switch legs. Switch legs again, this time. Make sure you have enough room. You might have to back away from your chair a little bit. The leg goes forward, sweeps out and around and back, and then comes through to the middle and forward. So circle, but think from the hip, from the root. Circle, loose, switch directions. Switch legs. Go in the other direction, back around. And together now. Empty the right leg, pick it up and turn it out and land it. Pick it up, turn it to neutral, land it. Pick it up, turn it internally. That's the weird one where the knee and toes are in, the heel is out. Then lift it and neutral, lift it and out. So make sure you're lifting so that you're rotating and landing. Internal, neutral. External, neutral. Now let's just skip over the neutral. Go right to internal, right to external. In, X. And neutral, switch, empty this left leg. External, neutral, internal. Now, 
skip over the neutral. And neutral. All right. Now we close that little phase. Hands come up, roll up and over, and settle, 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 settle. Hover them right in front of the belly. Elbows drop, shoulders relaxed. Raise it just a bit there. Okay. Now the next exercise is, and this is where you might want your chair on your side, right? But I'll do, a uh, hand can be on the chair or no chair, but empty one foot, lift it to the tippy toes, land the heel back down, shift. Empty the heel, get to the tippy toes, land the heel, shift. Heel, toes, maybe disconnect the toes, reconnect the toes to the floor and down, and then change. Maybe disconnect, reconnect, land, change, right? So keep doing that, shift. So we peel the foot up. Someday you might lift it higher, and leave it up there for a little bit and then change. You might play with just fingertips on your chair, right? Or even just hands hovering on your balance implement. Change. All right, now the next one that comes from this is probably gonna need a hand on a chair. The inside leg out in front, heel softly touching. Now, just shift into that foot and empty the back foot, toes stay on the ground. Then shift back and heel stays on the ground. Shift forward, toe. Shift back, heel. That's level one. Let's go to level two. Disconnect the foot, reconnect the foot. Shift. Disconnect the foot, reconnect. Shift. Lift. Lower. Shift. Remember the key to it being easy to lift and lower is a preliminary state of empty, meaning I'm not using it to keep me up because I'm relying on the other leg and that allows the free movement. If I try to lift this leg now or now or now or now or now, all of that's not gonna work as well as then when I finally arrive, then I can go, oh, easy. And so it takes that patience and that awareness to go, oh, now it's time, okay. And I teacup on my head, doesn't spill. And let's go finally for level three which is, you may need your hand on the chair for this, lift and bring it all the way up and tuck the heel in and under. So a little chamber and then down. Shift, and then for this one, it's heel up, but also knee forward and up, chamber. And then reach it back, shift back. Chamber, down, shift chamber, back and down, shift. One more. And we close it by just bringing the foot back standing and then switch sides. So again, because of how my chair is set up, I need to walk across, turn and face the other way. Inside foot, the one close to the chair goes out in front. Shift, level one. Back, forward, back. So if you're gonna, as you advance in this practice, <clears throat> what'll happen is, Level one will go from you needing your hand on something to it hovering or to no hand at all for level one. But then when we go to level two, you might need a fingertip or a full hand on the chair. 
right? And then level three, you might really almost need to lean on the chair. But in the level one moment, try to practice the least amount of support. Now we go lift, lower, shift. This is level two now. So you might have a hand near the chair or on the chair for level two, right? So that's also what I'm teaching you guys is not only the actual movement practice and techniques, but how to advance, how to climb the ladder. Because if I do this whole practice with two hands on the chair for level one and level two and level three and level, then there's some level of advancement that's never going to happen. So I have to be right at my own personal edge and say, okay, can I, can I just do a fingertip or, or a light touch for level one? Maybe eventually I'll have that same light touch on level two, right? And then eventually no hands ever. Level three now, up, tuck in, out, land, shift. So it's heel to butt and then knee up and then reach back and shift. And then up and tuck, down, shift, up and knee up. So just be challenging yourself as you do this practice on your own, hopefully during the week, right? Because if you have balance problems, you should do this every day. I mean, you just should. This type of thing, if you did this every morning, there's no way that you wouldn't get better and more capable at moving from A to B in your life. I just can't see a way that you don't improve, right? Because you're forcing your body to get better. That's required. Now, put the foot back. And we finished that exercise. Close. <clears throat> and let's go to the next exercise. So we set up just like we did a moment ago, inside foot. But this time, make sure you're a little further back from the chair so that when you take a full step, the chair is still within your reach, right? So level one, this is the one where you could do the least amount of support. So maybe think light, very light. So we shift into that front foot. Back foot is empty. Just let it sling through, float through, and land the heel. And then we shift into that foot and pause. That's one. We go back. Shift back. Wait for the foot to be empty. Let the foot swing back and forward. I mean, I'm sorry, and shift back. And then we pause. So just remember the exercise we did at the beginning where we were swinging the leg, right? That's what's happening here. We're shifting and then the leg is empty and I'm swinging it and then shifting. Same thing on the way back, shifting, swing, shift. So it's loose, it's light, it's free. Two more level ones. And if it's tight, if I'm holding onto this hip and leg, when I try to swing it, it's gonna force the upper body to do something funny. But if I'm loose, then I could swing this leg and nothing is changing in the rest of my body. You see that, right? The teacup's not spilling. So that allows me to walk with a sort of casualness that is required for you to be able to walk in a way that feels free again, feels loose. Let's go level two. Lift, lower. Shift. Now there's a small obstacle right in front of your foot, so you got to step up and over it. And then shift. This one lift, lower, shift back. Small obstacle behind your foot, you got to lift up, tuck it, reach it back, shift, lift, lower. Three more level two. Loose, just change which leg you're using. Change which leg you're using. Feel the differential of full and empty. Change, 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 change. Let's do three level threes. Tuck down. And this one is just about, you may really need the chair here. Here, all the way up, out and then land, shift forward, then go heel, knee, then back, shift, 
going up, tuck, reach, and then shift. So we're just exaggerating the movement. And this is sort of like if you were going to go <clears throat> clear some trails in the forest. Well, sure, you could clear just enough room in the forest to get your body through, right? And there could be bramble right next to you. But yeah, you could get through that area. Or you can blaze a trail that would allow you to move very freely. You could spin and dance and move as you go through the forest. So that's what we're doing here. We're blazing movement pathways, blazing these movement spaces in our brain-body connection so that when we walk regularly, we feel free, we feel loose, right? All right, let's switch sides. Inside foot, level one. Remember the swing, the swing of the leg, right? So shift, swing, shift, pause, shift back, swing, shift back. As you get better, no hands, loose. Shift, loose. Two more. So this is the money spot. This is right where the magic happens in this exchange. So we don't have to walk a million miles to get better at walking. Level two, lift, lower, shift, small obstacle, shift, lift, lower, shift back, small obstacle, shift back, lift, lower. How's your teacup doing? And eventually, as you get good at these practices, we play with eyes closed, Ooh, right? Again, that's down the road some. But all these same exercises, and then you take away your vision, and then your brain really starts to reach out. But you can't jump right to that stage. You have to do <clears throat> this basic, where you can even look around your room while you're moving, right? Level three, tucked up and in, reach out. And lower, shift, up and over, shift, up and tuck, and reach back, shift, level three. Two more, or I'm sorry, one more level three. Blazing those huge trails, right? Huge trails. So that when you walk regularly, it's easy. All right. Sink chew to the belly. So just look at the continuum we just did. We did sort of Standing in place, loose and swinging and loosening up some areas of the body. Then we took that to another level. We did just weight shifting back and forth with some challenge. Then we did it into having a one step forward and one step back, working on that exchange. And now the culmination of that in the forward and backward direction is what we do now, where it's get a runway, right? And this is where if you have a cane of some sort or a walker that you can use, for safety because now we got to leave the chair and we just take as many steps forward and as many steps backwards. So level one, put one foot out in front. This is all about the loose and the swing. So shift and just loose, swing the foot and then shift and swing, shift and swing that leg from the hip. Then we got to go backward, be very careful going backward, shift back, swing the foot back, the toe touches. Shift back, wait for it, swing the leg. Back, wait for it, swing the leg. Back, wait for it, swing. Let's do another level one. If you can get this feeling, 
of loose swinging leg, then you know that you're doing the exchange of full to empty. One more. And you could even imagine that your teacup is not spilling as you're moving through space. Level two, forward now, up over a small obstacle. Shift, wait for it to be empty, up over that obstacle. Wait for it to be empty. And back. Forward. Make the exchange. Make the exchange. Make the exchange. It's like a magic trick. You can make that empty full exchange. Let's do one of them at level three. Only if you feel safe, otherwise go back to two or even level one. That loose and so level three would be exaggerated. Exaggerated. That idea of blazing trails in the forest so that you can walk freely, right? That's what these large movements do. That's also what we're doing in our Qigong and Tai Chi class on Fridays, right? Is big and round and whole and complete movement so that the brain and body have this wide open space, right? Close. Level two, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the next sort of module or phase here, side steps, side steps. So get yourself to the right side of your chair uh, so it's just within reach there for safety but have some, some space on either side of it. So now we do our side steps. Uh, empty the, uh, fill the right leg, empty the left, and out. Shift. Bring that foot in. Shift. Swing it out, right? Loose, like we did at the beginning of class. Loose. Shift. Wait for it. Loose. Shift. This one's empty. Loose. Loose. Switching directions in and out, we go back. Shame. Shame. What we're also training here is the trading off between the muscles of the floor of the pelvis, right? So feel that trade off. Now we're over on this side. And then we trade it back, we trade the workload. All right, now facing, uh, I'll face you guys for this next part. Weight shift left, turn your belly button left. I'm sorry, right, my left, your right. And then shift left, turn the belly button. And then shift left, turn the belly button. So this, this is that basic of Tai Chi that we work on. Now we go right into sweep the leg and Raise that arm up, that's vapor. Put the right arm behind your back for this one. And then shift turn, this is the cloud, and the cloud rings. Shift, sweep the lake. Lakes turn into vapor and rise, become a cloud. Shift turn, cloud. Clouds naturally rain and become the lake, which then we shift and turn. Rise. Shift and turn. Put this hand behind your back, do the other hand, <clears throat> lake, vapor, 
shift and turn cloud, rain, lake, vapor, cloud, rain. Notice that you're doing weight change to the other leg and then just adding that rotation at the middle. And then you're doing weight change to the other leg and adding the rotation from the middle. One more. Now, as this one comes up to a cloud, bring the other hand out, it's in the lake. Shift, turn, cloud, and lake. Rain and vapor. Shift, turn, cloud, and lake. <clears throat> Rain and vapor. Shift, turn, cloud, and lake. Now, left foot should be empty. Bring it in. Out, rain and vapor, shift, turn, cloud, lake. As you rain and vapor, can you bring right foot in and out again without putting weight in it? So it just came in and went back out. And then we shift, turn, cloud, lake. As we rain and vapor, this leg's going to come in and just gently go back out. Shift, turn, cloud, lake, vapor and rain, in, out. Now let's just do a couple of that extra challenge here. So rain and vapor go in, out. Now watch close. We shift and turn, cloud, lake. As you rain, vapor, bring the right foot in and keep it in. So it comes in, stays there as we change the arms. Now there should be no weight in the right leg, but it stays close and we shift and turn. Now we should be in the right leg, turn to this side. As you vapor and rain, step the left foot out, but we don't put weight in it yet. Then we shift and turn. Now we should be in the left leg. As you vapor rain, bring the right foot in and keep it in. Shift onto it and turn. So you should be at this very close stance. Then as you vapor and rain, step that left foot out. So we're now inching along the room. Shift and turn, cloud leg. Vapor rain, step in. Shift, turn, cloud leg. Vapor and rain, step left foot out. Now, shift, turn, cloud leg. Here we're going to switch directions by going in out with the right leg. So vapor rain, in, out. Now we go back. Shift, turn, cloud leg. As you vapor rain, bring the left foot in and keep it in. Shift and turn onto the left leg. And then step the right foot out as you vapor and rain. Shift, turn, cloud leg. Vapor rain stepping in, keeping it in. Shift turn, cloud leg. Vapor rain step right foot out. Shift and turn. In with the vapor rain. Shift and turn out. And let that right hand come down and close. All right, so now we have that difficult one. And this is where we want to be careful as we're turning around the room to be safe. And I'll use Kathy's uh, experience last week where there was a bit of a fall, right? And I think we discovered what was missing was the awareness of a stillness in the middle of you that never breaks. So even if I'm rotating and turning and doing complex movements all around the room, you can see maybe that there's a bit of a still point inside. So all these interesting Tai Chi movements can be happening, spinning, Kung Fu in all these directions, but that stillness has to be present for us to be balanced and whole and safe. So keep that in mind as we empty the right foot. Remember the external rotation. So now we're there, shift onto the right leg, Rotate so the body is facing to the right. Left foot is empty. Bring it to match the right foot. And let's do it again. Empty the right foot. Turn it out. Shift and turn and square. 
You should be facing away from the camera, more or less. Empty the right leg again, turn it out, shift onto it, and now you should be facing the other wall. And finally, turn right foot out, shift onto it, and rotate. You should be facing camera again. Let's do that to the left. Left foot turn out, shift and square to that side wall. Left foot turn out, so you got to empty it, turn it out, and shift and square. Left foot empty first, turn it out second, and then shift, turn, and square. Left foot turn out, shift, turn, square. Now I wanna show you guys the next step on this exercise. There's a lot of different ways we can go, but just watch what I do. So what's important is when I go here that I don't immediately put my weight into my left leg because the next exercise is shift, turn, and take a step and go in the direction. Now watch again, we'll just do that again. Turn the foot out and then it's shift onto it, turn and take a step. And then if you do that one more time, shift, turn, take a step. And then one, one final time, turn the foot out, shift, turn and take a step. And you should end up right where you started. So I'd like us to try that. Please be very, very safe. And just note that you need a little more room. So it's, and this can be done very slow and very safe. Turn the foot out. Now it's shift and turn. Left foot stays empty as it comes forward and then it just gently swings forward. And then we shift into the left foot like we're gonna walk that way. But then we pause. Right foot is empty, we step it and turn it out. Now, Shift onto the right leg, turn the body to square to the right toes. Left foot is staying empty. Step it forward and shift into that left foot, making a move in the direction of the left foot. So now your right foot should be empty again. Right foot turns out. Shift, turn, and step, and shift. Turn the right foot out. Shift, turn, step, shift. One more time all the way around. So this is super duper practical. The phone rings across the room and you go, oh, it's over there. Rather than turning and falling on my face, I'm gonna empty my right foot, turn it out, step, and then I'm just gonna continue in the direction towards the phone. Oh, the phone's over to my right. Just turn it out, shift, step. But find the stillness inside that goes with you, whether you're rotating, turning, or whatever. <clears throat> Let's do that to the other direction. Left foot turns out. Shift onto it, rotate and square, orient the body. Right foot should be empty. Step it in the direction you're now facing and shift into that right foot, empty the left. Do it again. Left foot turns out. Shift and reorient the body. Then the right foot being empty can step in the direction you're facing, shift onto that foot. Left foot turns out. Shift, turn, step, shift, pause. Turn the left foot out. Shift, turn, step, shift, pause. Turn left foot out. One more round. Great job, everybody. Come back to your chairs. Let's do our closing sequence here. So hands on the chair for, for balance. Empty your right foot, step it behind, and then softly press the heel. So you get a little hip flexor stretch, you get a little calf stretch, and you're turning the pelvis and then release that and step together. Behind, press the heel, bring it back up, step.
continue. Some of you might play with no hands someday. Toe, press, release, back. Toe, press, release, back. One more of each. And back to middle. One hand on the chair, outside leg. Externally rotate, lift it, internally rotate, down. Externally rotate, lift, internal, down. This is that ABC version, right, where we're really breaking each part, but then eventually it's just round. You just circle it, but make sure it's from the hip, right? Because people often see the shin and foot moving through space, and so then I see a lot of like this type of thing, but not enough movement here. So if this is all loose and relaxed and I just move from the hip, from the socket and just circle, right? And switch legs, turn the leg out, lift it, roll it in, dangle it, turn it out, lift it, roll it in, Dangle, <clears throat> ABC, and then into circles. So it's like you sort of do it in squares and lines, and then eventually those should become circles. And switching sides again, this leg internally rotate, right? So before we external, now we swivel almost on the ball of the foot there, and then out, land it, internal. And then we just flow it. Switch, internal. Up and over. Again, we're just blazing trails, blazing wide trails, so that when you take a walk through the trails, metaphorically speaking, you're not running into spider webs and bramble and overgrowth and, you know, and done. And then final exercise. Three exercises in one. The first one is internal or external rotation, internal rotation, swivel. But again, you see the movement of the foot, but it's coming from the hip. Shake a, shake a, shake a, right? Then when the heel is in, lift the heel, swivel so it goes out, drop the heel. In, up, over, out. And it's <clears throat> tricky at first to think about, but then when you just go, oh, I'm just making spirals. I'm just making spirals for the knee, for the ankle, for the foot, and then spiral in the other direction, inward. Makes it simple again. And switch legs, shake it. You're frozen, Otto. Your camera's freezing you.
I'm back just in time to finish. <laughs> I hope you guys got most of that uh, finishing bit. Go ahead and have your seat in your chair and just finish with a light self massage of whatever feels good to you there. Body, legs, usually the sacrum needs a little extra after walking practice, the groin and hips, thighs and knees. Lower legs. All right, and then let's do those two main ones that are just sort of like the, the flow of the chi. Hand on the navel, around, rub the Ming Men, which is lumbar spine. Then with open palms, sweep down the back of the legs, around, up the inside of the legs to the belly button, and then Ming Men. So it's like a belt, <clears throat> up and down ski, and then open palms, and back up to the belly. Belt meridian. Ming Men, Door of Life, very important. Sweep, Yang channels down, Yin channels up. One more. And then finally, up the outer, down the inner. A one, two, a one, two. And seal, hands on the belly button, and then the Taoist bow. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, please unmute yourselves if you have any questions. Um, we're a little over 11, so if you got to be somewhere, you can just wave and, and leave. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here.